Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. Today's edition is a bonus one as version 4.6.0 has been released and we're going to go through its features. I haven't looked at this before so we're going to go through them together. It was released last week I think. As you can see there were quite a few changes. Let's go through the big ones. The first one is editing history is now periodically auto-saved every 10 seconds. Oh, excellent. And we can change that as well via the preferences. All right, so you can disable it again if you wanted to. It's a big one for me. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes Darktable crashes on me. I'm not sure what, what it's related to, but it happens every now and again. And it's always annoying if you're at the end of some long edit and you haven't saved because until now I think the history is only saved when you go back to light table it might be that 10 seconds is way too often but I'm sure we can find some happy medium somewhere maybe every 30 seconds or minute but we'll see the second one a new processing module RGB primaries has been added this module can be used for delicate color corrections as well as creative color grading oh. That sounds very interesting. It allows the red, green, and blue primary colors to be moved around using hue and purity controls. Very interesting. I'm gonna have a look at the user manual. Here we are. Uh, ta -ta. What does it say? RGB primaries. Adjust the hue and purity of the RGB primary col colors. All right, we already read that while leaving uncolored gray pixels unchanged. Hmm, nice. The open and see relationship between the colors are also preserved under this adjustment. If you increase the purity of the blue primary, the opponent yellow intensity increases to balance things out. Ooh. If you twist the blue hue towards cyan, the opponent yellow is twisted towards orange. That sounds very interesting. Okay, it's a replacement to the channel mixer, as in color calibration module. Okay, hmm. that's very interesting indeed. I'm looking forward to playing around with that. Where were we? Oh yeah, the third one. In addition, the sigmoid module now includes a new primary section, hmm. which can be used to gracefully handle difficult lighting situations, e.g. LEDs nice and tune the overall look of the image modifying these parameters can provide pleasing sunsets improved skin tones etc this feature can only be used with sigmoids per channel mode and is loosely based on the ideas of troy sobotka's agx and related work all right okay the included smooth preset should provide a good starting point for further corrections using this feature that sounds very interesting as well. Oh, lots of color related issues this time. Oh, not issues, additions. All right, sounds good. The next one, when working with the liquify and retouch modules, the fully uncropped image is now always shown with any crop indicated by displaying an overlaid rectangle. This allows for cropped out parts of the image to be used without having to first Disable the crop module and re-enable it when finished. Ah, ah, that's really cool. Okay, very nice. Yeah, it is, it is quite nice to be able to use cropped part of the image, uh, especially in your retouch module, but as well in liquify. If you want to cover something, it's probably nicer to cut some parts of the grass that you're already cropping from the image and use those instead of using or reusing parts of the grass that's going to be left in the image because that can be visible very quickly especially if you need to use them multiple times all right that's very interesting as well next one when panning or zooming in the darkroom view a low resolution placeholder used to be shown until the image was fully recalculated for the newly visible region now if any part of the previous view is still visible that part will be immediately shown in high quality, with only the remainder of the image being temporarily shown in low quality until the pipe has finished. 
okay, that's quite handy, quite nice. I um, can't honestly say that I've noticed that. Um, I'm, I'm sure it happens, but uh, unless the image is huge with lots of uh, manipulations already done on it, and I don't think I've noticed it taking a long time to recalculate the uh, the image. But that's that's great, of course. This has been achieved as part of a complete rework now for darkroom image display. Okay, interesting to know. All right, a few performance improvements with OpenCL. And the image display speed of in the map view has now been increased by 25%. Well, I think I think that's a bit more welcome than to me personally than the previous one because in the map view, especially if you have lots of images on that part, it can take a long time before you actually display them. So that's great. And export speed, mm, I mean, okay, great. I don't use JPEG 2000 and rarely have black and white uh, directly from well, on in TIFF, but good. And chromatic aberration module is now approximately 10% faster when run on the CPU. Okay, good. There are a lot of small other changes, but we're not going to go through them one by one. I'll leave a link to the uh, release notes and you can read them yourself if you want to. Let me know which one you would like me to discuss in detail first. Uh, would it be the additional section in the Sigmoid module or should we dive into the RGB primaries module? Let me know, leave your comments below. I hope that you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, comments or additions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.